Well, hello everyone. I'm Jill Bloom, publisher of Roofing Contractor, Walls and Ceilings, and Building Enclosure. And thank you so much for joining me for our legal insight with Trent Cotney, the CEO of Cotney Attorneys and Consultants. And Trent is so gracious with his time, and we always appreciate the, the opportunity to get some great insight as to what is happening in the legal world in construction. So, Trent, thank you so much for joining me. Jill, it's great to see you. You know, I uh, really enjoy being able to uh, talk to everyone out there. And, you know, like every week, this is a, a week where there's, there's plenty to discuss. So uh, thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. There's always there's always so much to talk about. We never run short, that's for sure. But let's start off with Trent. Um, there's a deal on federal infrastructure that appears to be in the works. And what should construction companies look forward to? So uh, this infrastructure, we've been talking about it for a while, and it's gone through a variety of different iterations, but we're, we're to the point now where it's almost at the finish line. And, um, you know, recently in the Senate, there was a lot of negotiations that went back and forth, anticipate that there will be a vote there before session breaks. But what contractors need to understand is it won't be till probably late September, September 20th or so, until any infrastructure bill gets in front of Biden to sign, right? So it will be a while before we see anything, assuming it goes through, okay? And, and you know, Kim, there, were, there were competing versions of this plan. There were revisions. We're still a long way from the finish line. But ultimately, if this does pass, then it is going to um, open up some, you know, federal money available for a variety of different uh, infrastructure type improvements, including some vertical infrastructure. So it is a good news for both, you know, roofing contractors and anybody that's engaged in building on enclosure work um, but it's, it's, we're going to, it'll probably be, you know, fourth quarter before we actually start to see any of it. Okay. So do you think there's going to be enough workers and supplies to support it? That's, that's the problem, Jill, you know, cause right now we, we've historically had uh, a problem with labor, um, and coupled with that, now we've got the material shortages. So, um, while I think that there will be some of this work that roofing contractors can definitely capitalize on and maybe switch gears and focus on some uh, things that do have materials readily available, some of the larger projects may be delayed until 2022, 2023. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, I, I do think this is a great opportunity for contractors to take a look at what's out there and potentially retool or refocus on certain things. You know, we had talked before about solar and some of the other things that are going to be pushed through the Biden administration, you know, as we're navigating the rest of 2022, definitely think it's worth a, a, a shot taking a look at it and seeing how you could pick up some of this money while it's out there. Yeah, absolutely. In regards to solar, Trent, are you hearing uh, contractors installing more solar because of that? Yeah, I've already had a lot of conversations with contractors that are, are figuring out ways to implement solar within their uh, business model. And the reason is, is it just adds a complementary um, you know, form of construction onto what they're already doing. Uh, there are going to be a variety of tax credits and you know, other incentives for uh, owners to take advantage of, and not just homeowners, but commercial owners as well. So I think it's a great opportunity for roofing contractors to uh, really take a look at solar and start figuring out a way to, um, you know, implement it in a more robust fashion. Yeah, well, I know that we're going to be hearing a lot more about solar as well as our federal infrastructure. It looked like it was, what, 2,000 pages? Yeah, yeah, at least. It's, it is a lot. So, um, you know, I'm We've got our government affairs team taking a look at it. Thank God they're having to review it and not me. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's, it, it is a, uh, it, it is, you definitely need a, a whole pot of coffee to get through that one. <laughs> Maybe three or four. <laughs> so, but Trent, what else are you hearing from contractors this week? So the materials issue continues to be a, a big problem, right? We've had um, a lot of issues oh. with, um, you know, existing orders uh, and pricing for those orders changing. You know, got a ton of phone calls about about certain items and how to go about dealing with it, not just upstream, but, you know, how to deal with it with uh, manufacturers downstream. And uh, I continue as these pressures, you know, uh, continue to rise. I do see contractors, um, you know, getting stuck more, uh, meaning that, you know, for those contracts they've already executed, there tends to be less and less room to negotiate, especially if you are a contractor that is doing work for a general contractor. 
uh, you know, talked to someone here recently and uh, the bulk of their business was uh, GC work. And I said, look, you got to understand when times are tough, they're going to push it on you. Right. So um, one of the things I'm really advocating is tighten up your accounts receivable. Um, make sure that you understand your lien rights and your bond rights, um, because I think you're going to see more and more of that uh, as we get into you know third and fourth quarter. Yeah. Well, looking at uh, roofingcontractor.com news, uh, I'm sure you saw the top 100 list is out, which is exciting. And I guess when as you look at that trend, are there any surprises to you? You know, I think uh, it was real interesting. So I took a look at it and I tend, you know, I looked at it online, but also I'd like to print it out, right? Because I like to, if I'm eating lunch, I like to have it in front of me and Mm -hmm. look at it and take a look at it. And, you know, there's a lot of people on there that have been there every single year and you kind of expect them to be there. But I think there, there's been a big gain um, in the restoration market. You know, you see a lot of of roofing contractors and the multi, multi multi-millions that are really taking advantage of a lot of the stormwork that's out there. So um, you know, it was great to see a lot of, a lot of friends, a lot of clients on there. Didn't, haven't counted how many, but, uh, definitely sent out some congratulations because it's a huge honor. And, uh, anybody on that list should, uh, should, should feel honored because of, um, you know, how difficult it is to get those kind of numbers. So. Absolutely. So I've got two questions for you. One as an attorney, one as a, as, as a consultant, but mm-hmm. as an attorney, what would you say to the companies on the list? And as a consultant, what would you say to companies that are striving to get there? So uh, as an attorney with my legal hat on, what I would say is the bigger you get, the more problems you have. Okay. And I I know that from being a business owner myself, right? So, um, and they don't just tend to go like this, you know, up in a line, they grow exponentially. So uh, it's really important that you look internally at your processes and procedures, make sure that you have got a great contract, that you've got great manuals, that you are doing whatever you can to be proactive rather than reactive and mitigate risk. Okay. On the consulting side, for those looking to get there, um, you know, there are a variety of thresholds that you have to hit. And then once you hit that, uh, it's very difficult to get to that point. And then after that, it becomes a little bit easier, right? Mm-hmm. So um, as you're coming up, you know, you got the million, you got the 5 million, you got the 10 million. Once you get over the 10 million, that's the big threshold because you have the ability to scale, but you have to have those procedures and things in place in order to do that. So what I would tell somebody that, that's looking to do that is um, make sure that you surround yourself with Peter, people that are smarter than you are. And what I mean by that is you have to understand what your strengths and your limitations are. Too many roofing contractors are focused solely on sales and sales are great, but sales don't keep you in business. They help the top line, but if you don't have any money on the bottom line, then what's the point of doing it, right? So what you really need to do is surround yourself with people, you know, focus on your strengths and use others to buttress your weaknesses. Yeah, great advice. Well, Trent, it looks like there's an upcoming legal seminar with NRCA on contract provisions to fight OSHA citations. Mm -hmm. Uh, How critical is this now considering it with the enforcement uptick? Yeah, I think it's really critical. And, you know, one of the things that, um, that we see a lot is roofing contractors that are using sub labor uh, getting uh, tagged for whatever the sub did. So one of the things that I'm going to talk about in the webinar is to make sure that contractors understand that there are certain provisions that you can put in your contract that will help mitigate the risk. It's not going to, it's not the silver, it's not the magic bullet that gets you out of it. Right. But it does uh, provide you with some great defenses and we're going to walk through that and talk about some of the things that you need in there. Yeah, sounds great. So, you know, we've got a lot of exciting things coming up, especially best of success in September. Um, What is a little bit of a teaser of what people will hear from you when they're there? So, yeah, best of success is is the event, right? And anybody that's listening to this, you know, if you're on the fence on as to whether or not to attend, I got to tell you that as a business owner, I get so much out of best of success. You get to talk with people in your industry about the problems that they're facing. And every time I go there, I gain real world knowledge that I can bring back, you know, and I'm, I'm talking as a business owner, not just as a speaker. Right. So as a speaker, this time, what I'm really going to talk about is, you know, how to sort of navigate and negotiate your contracts from a business standpoint, you know, what are the things that you can do? And it doesn't matter, you know, whether you are a residential contractor or a commercial contractor, 
whether you're contracting with an owner or a general contractor. So I'm gonna give you some, some tips and techniques, and these are the secrets of the trade that I'm going to tell you guys so that you've got it and then you can take it back and hopefully use it. I love it. Well, I can't wait to, to hear it all. I've got some, I'm really excited about all the speakers that are coming this year because there's some incredible things, just like what you're talking about in regards to credit. So I've got um, some good contractors that are going to be sharing some really good insight on that. But anyway, Trent, anything else on your mind that's happening this week or this is really Yeah, absolutely. Fun? You know, COVID-19 is kind of creeping its head up again. And, um, you know, one of the things that we're having to navigate more and more with roofing contractors is lost time, right? And it's not just, again, I don't care about the politics. I don't care about any of that. I just care about liability, right? It, that, it is what it is. So um, we, we have had a lot of issues with roofing contractors calling us and losing crew production because of COVID-19 and quarantine protocols. So a lot of people that were against, um, you know, certain policies and procedures that dealt with COVID-19, regardless of whether it's vaccination or otherwise, are now starting to enforce it because of lost productivity. Um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, no paid time off or whatever it is. Um, so the message that I'm sending to the listeners is make sure that you are on top of your HR policies when it comes to the ever-changing world of COVID-19. It seems like every other week there's new guidance on it. It's very important that you follow that guidance and that you give, um, you distill that information to your employees so that they're following it. Otherwise, you know, you don't want to be calling me if there's some kind of issue. So uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a strange world we live in, Jill. There's never a dull moment, but uh, yeah, stay tuned for more. Well, we know there is always going to be more. That's for sure when it comes to that topic, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Trent, thank you so much for your time. And thank you to everybody who's watching or listening. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Trent at cotneycl.com. And if you have any questions for us, make sure you reach out to us at roofingcontractor.com, wconline.com, or buildingenclosureonline.com. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for our free e-newsletters, uh, register for our website, which is free, check out our new platforms for our e-magazines. They're really amazing. And please, everyone stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys.